Hey everybody, it's Lisa Burningham, and I'm so glad that you're here with me. Now we're coming up on all of the major holidays for the year, which means it's entertaining season. Yay! I'm so excited. And I love to entertain for a large group of people with a huge spread. I also like to entertain for a small intimate gathering with family and friends. Today I'm gonna to share with you a few tips and ideas of how you can make a beautiful appetizer spread and hopefully you'll be able to get some ideas so that you can start entertaining for the holidays. If this is your first time here, then welcome. I'm Lisa. I do home decor, DIYs, party ideas, and holiday entertaining. If that sounds exciting to you, then I would love to have you subscribe. I post weekly videos on all of those things, and I have a lot of fun upcoming projects and collaborations, and I would love to share those with you. I am so lucky to be co-hosting this collaboration with the wonderful Antoinette from Simple Yet Chic. She does such amazing DIYs and such elegant home decor and holiday decorating. She is not only a fantastic designer, but she is just a lovely person. I will leave a link to Antoinette's channel in the description box below. I will also leave a link to the playlist. Now, I am so excited to see what everybody else has come up with for their holiday entertaining. I am always looking for new and fresh ideas. I will leave a link to that playlist and I am excited to see what everybody came up with. I'm gonna start off with a white tablecloth. I like using neutral tablecloths because they really make the food stand out and pop all the vibrant colors in the food. Also, if somebody spills, which inevitably they will, and that's okay, but if they do, we can just pop this in the wash and bleach it. On top of my tablecloth, I'm adding these tall, elegant centerpieces that will add height to my tablescape. Now I added my base with my greenery first because I don't want this base to topple over onto my food or have some of these leaves possibly fall into my food. No one wants a leaf in their meat. And I chose a magnolia leaf because again, it was classic and neutral and it will pair wonderfully with my tablescape. And it's also really easy to switch this out for different seasons. You could add some fall leaves for the uh, harvest party you could add some poinsettias or pine cones for a Christmas party. You could even add some floating candles for a New Year's Eve party. So using a vase with greenery is a perfect way to add a little bit of brightness to your tablescape. Now instead of leaving this just plain, I wanted to embellish it a little bit. So I got some crystals and I tied some fishy line to them. And then I got a little boutonniere pin and I tied it out in the fishing line and I stuck the boutonniere pin through the fishing line and then straight into the stems that are on my magnolia leaves. Now it's time for the best part, the food. Now before I put it out, I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice that's helped me over the years. Don't make everything yourself. The day of the party, you will be so stressed out. So buy a few things from the store, assemble them, I know that I always have friends and family that volunteer to bring things, so go ahead and assign them something because the day of the party, you want to be a happy person and with a lot less stress, so try not to make everything. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. One of my weaknesses is pretty dishes. I love them. I have never met a crystal platter that I did not want to bring home. And over the course of the years, I have accumulated a lot of them. I have gotten some great ones from the Dollar Tree, but I've also spent a little bit more money to get a classic piece that I know will last for a long time and that I will get a lot of good use out of. For instance, this silver, beautiful platter. It has some great detail in the handles and in the legs, and I know that I will be able to use it year after year. Now, the way that I set up my table was I put this large platter in the center. And then, as you see, I have a rectangular plate on this side, and to mimic that I have a white marble tray on this side. And then I also have my silver tear trays, and I have the other one on this side. And even though this tiered crystal tray doesn't match up with this crystal cake stand, 
they both mimic each other because they are circular and because they're both crystal. So this is a great way to set up a table because it gives you a lot of symmetry. A staple in entertaining is having a fruit and vegetable tray. Now when I select my fruits and veggies, I like to choose them that are very vibrant in color. That way they look fantastic against the bright white tablecloth. And then also I have a variety of different kinds of olives. I have some black olives and some green olives, and they are in a separate bowl because they have a little more liquid in them, and I didn't want that to run out and get on all the other fruits and veggies. You don't want a grape that tastes like a green olive. And then on the opposite side of that, I put my nuts in a bowl as well because I want those to stay nice and dry and not get soggy from any of the liquid that might be on any of their fruits and vegetables. I like having a variety of cheeses at my party. Number one, because I think they look fancy, but it's also nice to have something new and unusual for your guests to try. So today I have a smoked Gouda. I have a brie with honey drizzle and walnuts and cranberries. I also have a delicious dip that has pepper jelly on it. And then I also, for those that are not very adventurous, I have a few blocks of just plain cheddar cheese. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to cut a little slice out of each of my little pieces of cheese because then when your guests come by, they don't feel like they're the first ones that are cutting into it. And then also I like to do a menu. Now, I do this because people can see what they're eating and what they're getting into, but also it's really nice for those that are allergic to things or have any kind of dietary restrictions. One of the easiest and most impressive things that you can make are chocolate covered strawberries. All you need to do is melt some semi-sweet chocolate, dip in your strawberries, tap off the excess, and put it on a piece of wax paper. And then I went back through and I added a drizzle of white chocolate to the top. Now, I also like to add them to a little cupcake liner because it helps to prevent your fingers from getting all chocolatey. And I also think it looks like a little present. Isn't that cute? I added a selection of meat to this tiered tray. I have some honey ham, I have some corned beef, I have some salami, and then over here in these little mini glasses, I added some shrimp. In the bottom, I put a dab of cocktail sauce, I added my shrimp, and then I put a little slice of a lemon wedge on the side. I also made sure that I had a menu so that my guests see what meats are offered. I'm also adding a selection of crackers. I have some original crackers and then I have some rosemary flavored crackers. These will go great with the dips and the cheese. And then I also have some croissants. I love croissants. What is the party without croissants? You can eat them plain or because we have meat and cheese, you can make a little sandwich out of it too. The final step is to add a whole bunch of cocktail forks to each platter because you want to make sure that everybody has something to serve themselves with because you don't want everybody's fingers in the food. And then I'm also going to add a few more magnolia leaves and I'm going to scatter them throughout the tablescape just to fill in any vacant spaces and to add a little more vibrancy to my table. One final thing that I like to do at the end of the night is to give my guests a party favor. And I usually do a few options. In the box, I have some chocolate Hershey Kisses, and then I also have some mold cider candles. I would definitely go for the candles, and my husband would definitely pick the chocolate. It's just a fun way to let your guests know that you really appreciated them being here and spending time with you, but it's also a fun thing for them to take home as a great parting gift. There is nothing better than having loved ones over for an evening of great conversation, lots of laughs, and a whole lot of eating. 
I hope you got some inspiration or ideas of how you could throw a wonderful holiday party. Again, I want to thank my co-host Antoinette and all the participants that joined this challenge. Happy entertaining, everyone! When it comes to holiday entertaining, it's only natural to want to gather friends and family together and host an event that adds to the festive glow of the season. Include a wow tablescape filled with a variety of delicious hors d'oeuvres from a fruit tray to a cheese board. And of course, let your guests know how much you appreciate them being there. If you're looking for other holiday entertaining ideas, then I've got some for you. And as always, thank you so much for watching.